Winslow Homer is probably considered the most famous American artist. I think that this exhibition is incredibly exciting for people because if you know even a very little about art, Winslow Homer is a name you know. It was organized by the Cleveland Museum of Art and it is an exhibition of 59 paintings. 15 of them are by Winslow Homer and the remaining are by 13 younger American artists who began to paint landscape while Winslow Homer was still alive. Many of these artists later become some of the best known uh, artists of their generation, such as Robert Henry, young artist George Bellows, Rockwell Kent. And the exhibition attempts to demonstrate how they were all influenced by Winslow Homer. The exhibition also tries to examine the late works of Winslow Homer in their own right. Homer had an extremely successful career. It began during the Civil War when he produced woodcuts for Harper's Weekly magazine. His paintings of beautiful women and genre scenes were very popular. But at the age of 50, he decided he needed a change. It became rather a recluse, and it's a fascinating myth that kind of grew up around Homer, which he kind of encouraged. His work took um, a real shift. Uh, there was some point in the early 1880s when um, he left for England, went to a very small fishing village in, on the north coast of England and began to study the sea and the effects that the sea had on the lives of the people who lived there. When he returned to the United States, um, he, he decided to move, um, to abandon New York and his studio and to move to Proud's Neck where his family uh, owned some land, and he remained there for the rest of his life. We don't know why Homer withdrew um, from the New York art scene. He had, as a young man, been uh, met with a great deal of success. But this is really what he concentrated on at the end of his life. He brought his work down to, an es to the essentials so that he could confront the battle between man and nature and between land and water. Northeaster is one of Homer's most famous seascapes, and certainly one of the seascapes that's most influential for the younger painters. You can see in Homer's seascapes uh, wonderful brushwork. There's a, a very vigorous brushwork that really energizes this canvas, and you really begin to get the feel for the pounding surf on those rocks. During his career, Winslow Homer strived to develop an American art style separate and distinct from a European art influences. Homer's work influenced many young American artists, especially Robert Henry. Henry was himself an artist, but he was also a very charismatic leader and teacher. And he had a whole group of students that gathered around him. And um, Henry really urged his students to pursue the American dream, to paint American paintings, to look around them, to not look as far as Europe and to not follow other more established, acceptable kinds of norms. So he, um, for, for Henry, Homer was a wonderful model. Homer was kind of a guiding light from the 19th century. They used to use the phrase, the big strong way of seeing, that Homer's paintings were the big strong way of seeing, the American way of seeing, a democratic art. And those were kind of the key phrases that Henry really spoke to painters such as Bellows and Hopper and uh, Kent and got them excited about that. And that's really one of the themes and one of the continuing chords that you see struck during uh, the early years of the 20th century with the Ashcan School painters. The Ashcan School was a group of artists in the early 20th century who attempted to paint a rugged, realistic type of American art. They're called the Ashcan School because Ashcan is another really name for, for a garbage can. And a lot of the critics, it's hard to believe now looking at an Ernest Lawson or um, a Robert Henry or even a John Sloan that these were revolutionary paintings in their day and that people were scandalized by painting women hanging out laundry and by painting uh, children playing in the street. It was, it was considered very scandalous in its day to, to paint the kind of underside of New York life or Boston life. And that's why they were called the Ashcan School. A 
Another thing that this exhibition does that is it asks us to relook at the early 20th century American painters because traditionally when we study early 20th century American painting you divide it down into three nice little neat categories the artists that were influenced by Europe the European tradition the artists that were in the Henry camp who refused literally to go to, to Europe and then the kind of illustrator painters the local regional painters this exhibition asks you to take those three strains of artists that you usually think of as in, very independent of one another and make you look at them and see for the first time that they could have a common ancestor, they could have a common influence in Winslow Homer.